The very first Wasteland game sprang from the mind of Brian Fargo and was released by Interplay and EA in 1988. The top-down open-world post-apocalyptic RPG was the starting point for the concepts that grew into the Fallout series, and stands as a great franchise in its own right. At its core are consequence-based decision-making, a darkly satirical nuclear Armageddon as its backdrop, and classic tabletop attribute-based combat. With Wasteland 3 just around the corner, it's a great time to hop into the series, and to do so, you're going to need to know the story so far. The original Wasteland, and its remastered version, tell the tale of the Desert Rangers, a force for law and order in the untamed, irradiated deserts of post-apocalyptic Nevada and Arizona. After a cluster of meteors wiped out a bunch of satellites in 1998 and triggered a nuclear panic between the U.S. and Soviet Union, most survivors of the resulting apocalypse have led short, brutal lives of savagery and deprivation. Hoping to reverse that trend, a corps of army engineers in the Arizona desert took over a nearby federal prison, expelled the prisoners and the wastes, forming the raider bands that nowadays plague the area, and set up a command center. They dubbed themselves the Desert Rangers, in honor of the Texas and Arizona Rangers, and decades later, they still work to maintain tenuous peace in the region. Players took a rookie squad of rangers out into the desert, explored, aided or destroyed local communities, earned field promotions, and made tons of decisions that came back to bite them on the butt later on. Ultimately, the Wasteland 1 rangers made it all the way to Vegas and back, and tangled with an out-of-control pre-war AI called Cochise, who's bent on replacing the human race with cyborgs. From base Cochise, their desert enclave and a former military installation, this AI and an insane former commander named Erwin Finster conspire to wipe out all standard humans and replace them with a purer form. Needless to say, the rangers don't cotton to this plan. With the help of an android named Max, the rangers build their power level, arm up, and ultimately storm the base, melting down its nuclear reactor and foiling Project Darwin and a cybernetically enhanced Finster. Huzzah! Twisted peace reigns in the wastes for a time. Fifteen years later, in 2102, Wasteland 2 finds the Desert Rangers now occupying Guardian Citadel, Finster's former base, as their new headquarters. When Ace, a veteran ranger from the first game, is killed while seeking the source of a mysterious and threatening radio transmission, Ranger General Vargas sends a new rookie squad to complete his quest. Team Echo-1 then heads to the radio tower where Ace was aced, only to find the remains of a synth, a synthetic human imbued with artificial intelligence, plus some more standard murderous robots. While making tough decisions, impacting local communities, and wandering the wastes, the rangers discover more dead comrades and more synth strangeness. They finally isolate the source of the radio signal, which has been promising a union of man and machine and the death of the rangers. Around this time, local stronghold DeMonta is ravaged by killer androids, who it turns out plan to install cybernetic enhancements in every human they can, whether they want them or not. And it all traces back to the source of the signal, the ruins of Los Angeles. When the initial team Vargas sends to LA to investigate are shot down and killed, guess who gets tapped to follow through with the mission? That's right, our favorite rookie squad, Echo-1. They have an arduous journey to the coast, during which they foil an attempt to smear the rangers, navigate various factions and their diverse interests, upgrade their radiation suits using kitty litter, and expand the desert rangers' sphere of influence. Finally arriving at their destination, they then battle rogue AIs and robots, grapple with moral gray areas, and dispatch all manner of desert madmen, nuclear monks, mangy waste wolves, and the like. In true sequel fashion, we finally realize that Matthias and Dugan, two survivors from the sacking of the Guardian Citadel in the first game, are actually the ones to blame. They've been rebuilding their robot army, and plan to wipe the rangers off the map, revive base Kochi's boss AI, and upload their own consciousnesses to the minds of every cybernetically enhanced human on Earth, thereby instantly becoming the hive-minded overlords of a zombie army of cyborgs. The rangers neutralize Dugan, an AI in control of a whole swarm of murder bots, only to find out that the bad guys have already hacked into the automated defenses of Ranger HQ and turned them against General Vargas and the rest of the rangers. Rushing back to base in a chopper, Team Echo-1 and the remaining survivors battle their way into a previously inaccessible area of base Cochise, where the evil AI that started it all has lain dormant since the first game. Cochise invades and takes over the body of Matthias, as well as any cyborgs and machines in the area, and a climactic fight ensues. It's finally revealed that the Cochise AI was the one responsible
responsible for triggering the 1998 nuclear holocaust in the first place, and that the only way to wipe it out for good is by nuking Ranger Citadel, formerly Cochise Base, into a smoking crater. One of Echo One's members bravely sacrifices themselves to detonate the nuke, the survivors flee in their helicopter, and it all ends as it began in a massive nuclear fireball. So, with the Cochise AI story arc seemingly wrapped up, what direction will the third installment of Wasteland take us in? Or will Cochise return from the dead once more to harangue our rangers? You can find out yourself when Wasteland 3 hits screens on August 28th, or by keeping it locked to IGN.